Hello, I'm Eileen Marcus, and I am here to tell you today about Knowing Myself, Part 3, Time Takes Time. And yes, I am in my pajamas in my snuggly bed, because why not? I love myself, I have my little gnomes I love, and I want you to see all of me. So time takes time. If you're like me, you rush around. And when I rush to do errands, to do the dishes, to get to the other side of completing something, I have accidents. I make mistakes. I am not settled. And I'm often not at peace. The good news is I don't beat myself up anymore. And if you've been following along with my series, part one talks about tossing things that don't work for me. That includes behaviors. Beating myself up does not work for me anymore. Part two is really about falling in love with myself, snuggly pajamas in bed, and shifting my perspective about how I see things, expectations, and what I can actually bring to a situation. Now, I'm very lucky. The universe gives me a lot of signs, and the sign that the universe gives me the most is, slow down, you're missing things. This was a hard lesson for me to learn. Patience was not in my repertoire. I wanted to get there, know it, be done, because I didn't like feelings. I didn't like learning things. And I ran from those things that I needed to, to, to really get into. And that's what growing older is about, finally facing the things I was afraid of before. So I have a concept called my emotional toolbox. And these are these emotions and things that I know. I'm kind of aware of where they started. I know how they show up and I know what to do with them. And patience was one that I really had to build to learn to sit down and sit still to really lean into something to be able to touch this. Now, here's a little teaser. My favorite new topic is managing annoying me. So stay tuned for part four of my series of knowing yourself because it is all, right, all about getting out of your own way and knowing who you are as the whole series is. So my baseline now is just learning to love and accept myself. So when I rushed into a relationship, something I wanted with the right person, that made it wrong for all the right reasons I wasn't ready. I found out there's some things you need to practice before you can have them. Hence the appropriately named title for this part, Time Takes Time. Patience is one of those behaviors I had to learn. Me? Wait, why? You know, I'm this, I'm that. There's a million things I couldn't do, always at a big rush. And I had good reasons, but I learned that I could not outskirt my emotions. Those pesky feelings kept resurfacing and I needed to address them. This is not a one and done situation. Yesterday it snowed. I shoveled off my deck early in the morning. It was about four inches. Mid afternoon, right after lunch, I shoveled again about two inches. At the end of the day, about four o'clock, I shoveled for the last time about one inch. Each time it was easier. I had less to shovel and less to remove and more to show up about. And that's what this is about. It's not a one and done. It's about digging into things so you can get to them and that they become easier to handle. The irony, the universe tells me to slow down, but why am I so slow to do what's right for me? I had to learn a way to weather hard emotions and how to touch them without spiraling out of control. I had to go to new things instead of my old things of eating or numbing or, you know, going out with friends and ignoring them. And here's what I've learned. Three things that helped me to dig into sitting still and learning what I've learned to get what I want. The first is loneliness is qualitatively different when you love yourself. When I found myself soulmateless after the breakup, I knew the answer was to lean in. Loneliness is quantitative quantitatively different. Like when you get a bone density test and they say significantly, you know, significant, it's different. Why is it different now? Because I've filled my life with things I love, with things I value, committee meetings, friends, um, hobbies that give me time, that not give me time, that I do, that I like the time I'm spending. I'm not rushing through them. So putting these things in my life that I value makes my life complete. Do I still get lonely without, you know, a, a soulmate sitting next to me, someone to turn to? Yes, 
but the bouts do not get as long and deep. It's like that last layer of snow. They're much easier to get through and I get through them. My time alone really gave me time for reflection and processing loving another. And it really gave me time to put some tools in my emotional toolbox of what it means to be with another and who am I. So I think that loneliness looks different and loneliness was something I was always so scared about now that I love myself and I have things in my life I love. The second thing I've learned is my bucket list. We all know what a bucket list is at this point and by working on my bucket list that keeps me busy but busy productive in service of something while I am learning the lessons. I separate my bucket list into two things, the things I choose and the things I must work towards. The things I choose, although there's money, time, coordination involved, a trip to Paris, a favorite museum, learning how to make the perfect zucchini gluten-free muffin. Those can be very delicious. I can do those things. I just have to put time, effort, coordination. Different from when I was working, I just have to focus. But then there are things I must work towards. Two items on my bucket list, and no, one is not climbing the Himalayan mountains. That would never be on my bucket list. But two things are, I wanted to be in a movie. I wanted to be an extra. And I had to find an opportunity. I had to find out how the system worked. I had to find out how to get in the movie. I had to get chosen. And then I had to make sure my scenes didn't cut, get cut. And I learned that it was a long process. I had to hail a taxi in the movie scene because I did get to be an extra 40 times. Taxi, taxi, taxi. Was it glamorous? No. Was it fun? Yes. Was it exhausting? Absolutely. When they called me for another day, did I show up? Yes. And in the written portion of this blog, there's a link to read about that experience. I'm also going to own up to something I really want. And it's scary and it's big. And that's to do a TEDx talk. Now, this is not in my control. I can hone my message. I can fill out the applications. I can do the best video I can. I can really dig into who I am and how I present myself. But an organizer, a TEDx stage has to choose me. And I might not get chosen. Universe, please choose me. But I will continue to do the footwork to get there because that also helps me nourish me and helps me learn about me and digs into the time that I'm alone and makes me feel that I'm moving somewhere. I'm putting my intent out in the world. And that definitely makes me feel less lonely and also lets me accomplish some things I want to do before my time in this body is up. The third thing for me about time takes time is wanting to be in a relationship. Now, this is not for everyone. I have heard from a lot of you. I'm okay without a relationship. Well, so am I. I've been single a long time. I have friends. I know what to do. I'm not as lonely anymore, quantitatively different, qualitatively different. But I have learned that I want to be in a relationship. I want the chance, now that I'm fully showing up for my own life, to be with another partner romantically, to have a soulmate, to have someone who is spiritual with me and we practice things together and we kind of witness each other's life. And I have to be honest about that. And I know now, having lost my soulmate, I don't think he's totally lost, but not being together right now, that time takes time. I had to learn how to know myself how to be in a relationship, how to see what I wanted, the big picture, the bucket list, and how to really think about what I wanted that to look like. I wasn't born ready, although I thought I should be. So what's next? Time takes time. Slow down. Good things come to those who wait. Waiting includes more than sitting around and binge watching shows and eating homemade, delicious, gluten-free zucchini muffins. I didn't nail that one. It means doing the work to get me there, to get me where I want to go, getting ready to receive. I now have learned, and I want you to, to enjoy everything from food shopping to taking the garbage out. I've rediscovered parts of each task that connect me to me, and I savor each moment. I'm working towards my bucket list. I put my desires out to the universe and I enjoy everything that comes my way. And I know if it doesn't go my way, that's okay because I love myself unconditionally and I hope you do too. This is Eileen Marcus, Knowing Yourself series. And for today, time takes time. Slow down and savor every moment.